The Auntie Show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. These are the voyages of the GNT Show. Our continued mission to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to Boliga, where no show has gone before. Live long and prosper, bitches. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the GNT Show, episode 223. I'm Terry Lynn. To my right and your left is the guy, Gettysburg 7. Oh, Joe Lantru. And that song you heard coming out of break was uh, She's So Sanctuary by The Cult. What a great band. And there she is to my left, your right. It's Terry Lynn. Hello. And there he is to my right, your left. And uh, today he's uh, he's wearing his Perry Mason uh, gear from J.C. Penny. It's Ceridium. Kapla. I rest my case. Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, you do. And there she is over there, furiously doing her Samuel T. Cogley impression. It's Jasper. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't think she heard. And you. I still can't hear a goddamn thing. But oh. whatever. Hi. Hi, Jasper. <laughs> Hello. Oh dear. <laughs> my poor Jasper. <laughs> oh, the cult! What a band! And we and we have a a, a, a guest <laughs> in the room. Uh, oh yeah, we... that's right. And there he is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to that. <laughs> you know what it is because it's not listed on our I know. team speak. He's not thing. Indian speak. He, he he. There he is wearing his best ninja gear. <laughs> it's Kajiro Vance. Hello. Yay! Yes, I'm, I'm wearing my ninja gear and my uh, Seahawk slippers. Right on. <laughs> and he's on the ceiling, just so you all know. <laughs> That's right. And he's hanging from some wires, and there's this little bead of sweat. And if it hits the floor... It's going to set off the sensors. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. Too yeah. late. Well, let's start it off, Coffee Clutch people. What did you do this week? Coffee Clutch. It's crazy. Super Bowl is... Sunday. <laughs> it, picks, it is Super picks. Bowl Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. All right, Nick, what did you do this week? Well, who are you picking? I said you, Nick. No, who are you picking? Oh, for the Super Bowl? Yes. Oh. None of the above. Whoever... Hey, there's only two games. There's only I'm two picking teams whoever playing. lets me win the pool. The numbers Jesus come out Christ. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in three pools. A $10 pool, a $5 pool, and a $1 pool. You wouldn't be gambling, would you, Terry? I'm shocked. Shocked to find that there's gambling going on in here. Especially because I gambled on a reservation. <gasps> <gasps> Shocking. Oh, well, then it's so surprising. <laughs> I <don't> remember. <laughs> That's practically legal. By the way, by the way Alan, <laughs> yes. so Claude Rains. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, know, I know what you did there. <laughs> It's always nice when, because it's funny, is because I know that Alan puts a lot of these jokes in the chat room, and we miss half of them because we're reading something else in this on the uh, on our screens, and so I, I, it's nice to see that Alan's jokes are getting through. No, you know what the problem is, is that whenever I write something there, it's already got a thirty second delay. You guys have already moved on to three other subjects by then. <laughs> and meanwhile, Sunsail's got like the eyebrow guy going. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, Round up the usual. Yeah, suspects. no. Uh, to be honest with you, I think Alan, uh, Alan, you don't you you you're rooting for the Broncos today, right? I am. Which is saying, I don't know why because well I do know why but uh, he has this thing against Cam Newton. Yeah, uh, and, it's because he's racist. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll file that one back. Uh, <laughs> no, I think he thinks he's just a jerk. I think he's an arrogant jerk. That's just my opinion. See, I uh, just see him as a young kid having fun. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, really, I do. I mean, it, it, he's no different than Jim McMahon was. I didn't like him either. Yeah, like, that's true. Uh, and there's Eyebrow Guy. <laughs> Yay, Eyebrow Guy. Eyebrow Guy. Eyebrow Guy mesmerizes me. I'm 
That's a little scary. D- did you know that Jim McMahon, first of all, it really stunned me to realize that he's like 60 years old. Well, it's been 30 years since they played in the Super Bowl. I know, but that he, um, he's got CTE re- pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, he does. And I Is mean, that that um, concussion thing? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's not a shock because that guy got, they beat the hell out of him. But uh, I don't know. It's just those of us that remember the 85 Bears, that yeah. cocky swagger guy who now is like doing 10,000 piece puzzles to keep his mind active. Just yeah. it, 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 it brought tear. It literally brought tears to my eyes because it was like, no, this is this is not. No, this is Jim McMahon, you know? Yeah. It's um, truly a shame. You know? There was a there was a thirty for thirty on ESPN about the eighty five bear and Buddy Ryan is just oh my god. What was the, the one that I passed by yesterday and I I got stuck and I was watching it for like five minutes and I thought oh if I stand here I'll get I'll get sucked in. Um, it was another it was another like thirty for thirty and it was a. Uh, uh, oh, I don't remember. I'll remember it later. Yeah, it was very memorable. I can tell. Uh, oh no, no, no! <laughs> I, mean, it's just, I started to cry right off the bat. Damn it! Um, I don't remember now. Like Mike, I've I I was I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <clears throat> so Nick, what did you do this week? Uh, well, there was there was work. You know, lots of work. Yeah. Um, and well. Turns out my 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 off duty hours from work were taken up with uh, some other stuff we'll be discussing later. Yes, yeah, uh, I think that kind of covers it for me, uh, Miss Miss Jespa. Oh, um, well, uh, what have I been doing? Uh, well, I've been I've been doing classwork stuff, so lots of that, and um, plus I. I, you know, I work for a wedding blog and I, basically what I do is I'm kind of a a picture jockey. So I move stuff around and I, you you know, you make choices about what you're going to put up there because not everything is good. And I kid you not, but next, uh, later this month, there will be a bride. It's, it's actually a a model shoot with a headpiece with antlers. So, uh, look out for that. (laughs) Okay. Holy! Really? <laughs> to, to sort of in the land of weirdness. Yes, for real. Is it like a, I, I'm a not fairy joking. wedding? Either the twenty fourth or the twenty fifth. I forget. But... Wow. I'm sorry. Is it like a fairy wedding of some kind? Like a Tolkien esque thing. Yeah, I think that's the the, um, the the general theme is woodland and junk like that. Wow. Okay. People are weird. <laughs> we are. So we there are. you go. We are weird. That I that I that's part of the reason I love people so much is because we are weird. Um, I, Mikey, but, uh, what? <laughs> Nick still? St- are you still stymied, Nick? Nick? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the pain. <laughs> Mikey, what did you do this week? Um, let's. Uh, not much, really. Um, I tried to keep my head down and my nose clean. <laughs> <laughs> And his feet on the ground, and he kept reaching for the stars. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Nose Casey. to the grindstone. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I let's see. We recorded a a couple uh, an episode of uh, of Gates of, of or excuse me, Gates Straight Out Gallifrey. Um, episode and geez, three. Mike, how did that go? Well, that episode three went great. It's out on our on the website right now. Um, episode four, however, evaporated into the ether. <laughs> we recorded episode four, and that well, let's just say, <laughs> did not go so well. And in fact, there is no episode four. So tune in in a couple weeks for episode five. <laughs> That's George's fault, isn't it? Uh, well, if you want to share the blame, sure. Because he didn't record the backup. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, it works a lot like ours does, which is we have backups for our backups for yes. our backups. Good. Exactly. And because none of us were recording, not even the original, let alone the backups, <laughs> it, it, it quickly evaporated into the ether. But it was a great episode. We had do- the doctor show up in his TARDIS, and he took us on an adventure, but then we dropped the recorder. So, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. <laughs> oh well, let's. Uh, uh, what do we? How do we start? To, how do we start this week's show? Should we start it with general news and 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 or are we just gonna 
start with our this happened this week thing and then move on to general news like we did last week? Shall we just bring everybody up to date with the latest drama in Naxanar? <sighs> <laughs> Don't everyone start at once. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeez. We, we will. How about if we just delay it a little bit? Because Jespa really wants to participate in this conversation. And we yeah. have a little technical glitch right now where she can't hear <laughs> what we're saying. So she needs to be able to um, kind of restart and join us. So we'll get to a little general news and then we'll we'll kind of deal with the the updates from um, what's going on with Axanar. And really, it's not a whole lot. It really isn't a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's okay, not so a whole I, lot I, in uh, terms of quantity, but right. it's a whole lot in terms of quality. Quality, yeah. There's just... <laughs> <clears throat> it, this thing, um, it, it never... I guess, I, I guess I'm just stumped it by blows it. Up. Yeah, yeah. It, it is kind of in that way, in that vein, isn't it? <clears throat> which we all we all had a fear that it might when this whole when the when the lawsuit was served uh, we all had a fear that everything was just going to go to hell in a handbasket and it's kind of heading towards that edge and i'm i'm saddened by that i think it's really kind of fucked up to be honest with you um the fandom doesn't deserve it the donors don't deserve it and um yeah yeah that's 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 just what I think, man. So, um, but let's let's get to some um, yes general news. What's new in the Star Trek universe? General news. We have all these wonderful links, and they're there. Okay. Um, oh, big news. Uh, Destination Star Trek, which is the UK or the the European uh, official. Star Trek convention has been announced uh, for their location. It's been in London, it's been in Germany, and now they're moving into Birmingham, England. Uh, the announcement came out this week, I believe, and it is set for October. So for You're all of Steve. our... Uh, he's probably sleepy now for his 20-minute allotment for the week. Who said that he was allowed to sleep? <laughs> you know, he's pissing me off. <laughs> Poor Steve. Poor Midnight Shadow. He's he's involved in like 30 podcasts. And the poor guy. No, he he I saw him post last night that he was having some pretty bad headaches. So yeah. I hope he's oh, getting some yeah, sleep. No, he does, yeah. So uh, we hope you feel better, Steve. So um Destination Star Trek Europe has been set for Birmingham, England. It's going to be October 7th through 9th at the National Exhibition Center in Birmingham, England. Uh it will be it says here Star Trek Europe follows on the heels of two blockbuster events in London and one in Germany, which we previously discussed. And the uh the uh, the guests that have been confirmed so far are Nicole DeBoer, Anthony, uh, Alexander Siddig, Terry Farrell, William Shatner, Christopher Lloyd, Jonathan Ooh. Frakes, Walter Koenig, and Marina Sirtis. Right on. So that's kind of cool. Did, did you see, there's so much shit that came out this week. Again, we're, we're trying to keep up with all of the news that is coming out for Star Trek for the 50th anniversary. And there's so much stuff. Oh, it's, it's so cool. Yeah. Um, before we get to yeah. the licensing one, yeah, Which, um, let's let's save that one for the last for the general news because okay. it works well for as a sweeper for product news. Okay, um, but I want to talk about for uh, for a moment. I want to talk about the, the the opera. The opera. It's that's what Alan has up on his screen. We watched the trailer, the kind of uh, um, the teaser that they have for it. In, and this is in San Antonio. Uh, the Piccolo, the Piccola Opera San Antonio um, is doing... Mozart. Yeah, but is it the... It's not the flute. Which which Mozart um, production is it? The oh, abduction... The abduction of Sir Aguilio. Yeah. Sorry, it's and, very loud. <laughs> and they are doing... They're, they're, at, they're putting a Star Trek twist on it. <laughs> yeah, it, they're... they're costumed as or it is themed as or set kind of how do you say it? it's seated in 
the Star Trek universe um, for the original series. So the main character is Kirk, kind of a thing. The one of the other characters is now they're still the same characters from Mozart. They're just dressed as the Star Trek characters. So this is if if you guys don't follow opera, this is not abnormal. This gets done all the time. It's just that it's the first time I've seen it. So so overtly done in a Star Trek uh, theme where you've got Klingons with Batleths and Orions and um, there's a Gorn. There's a Gorn in it and <laughs> and it I I think it would probably translate really really well into a Star Trek episode. Um, it looks like so much fun. Toreador, don't spit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I hear they have a big production number, though, of Klingons with bathlets doing high kicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. West Side Story, done in track. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Right with on. Klingons on one side and, and Federation Starfleet on, on the, the other. other. Yeah. And, 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 oh, and, yeah. and Natalie Wood is an Orion. <laughs> no, she would, have to be a, she would have to be a Klingon. It could well, also not if you go Romulans. by Stowe. could also what was it? Romulans. Oh, you know, mm. that would probably be even better. Oh, that would be, yeah. A West Side Story is Starfleet Romulan. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would work really well. Not that I don't have love for my Klingon brothers and Break sisters, it down but... even more, Mike. Vulcans and Romulans. Nah. <laughs> that might be a little too specific. but no. And people would, and, and, and non-Trekkies would totally get confused by the ears. It's like they all got ears. What's, what's well, you can do it by the way they're dressed. <laughs> hey, look at all the elves. <laughs> <laughs> really, forehead boy? Really, forehead boy? I'm just saying, uh, it just it just might confuse some people. <laughs> well, either way, I think it's a very cool thing. And if you live in the San Antonio era, area, I think it's I think it this already passed. This weekend only. It was. Only, yeah. so oh, oh, tonight's oh, the last I have performance. To ask you guys, two thirty p.m. is the last showing, so there's still time. Get your I, tickets. I yeah. just realized I meant to ask this in Coffee Clutch, but I just found my notes. Oh God! Did any of you watch? <sighs> Grease Live? No. I did. Because yeah. I, I love Grease. What did you think, Mike? It was a poor substitute for the real thing. Well, it actually was the real thing because it was a stage <laughs> well, I presentation mean, first. But I mean, I, when I was watching, I, I was like, I missed the moot, the moot, the Grease, the movie. Well, you or see, whatever and that was, was the well, problem that I was seeing on social media. Everyone was comparing it to the movie. Yeah. You, you can't do that because this was the stage version. Yeah, the, the, they have two different scripts. They don't even Very have, much. Yeah. The people were like, are, why are they rewriting it? No, no, this is the original. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it, I, I I had fun. I enjoyed watching it, but yeah, I, that that was that was something I kept doing was comparing it to the film. I guess that just speaks how much the film is part of people's consciousness. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. Um, if and let's face it, the remember musicals had kind of died by the time Grease came out, and oh yeah, it, it was the first one to really kind of try to to re to to restart the genre mm -hmm. of musicals and film and you well, know I, unfortunately Xanadu came out after that and it was just Xanadu, <laughs> ba, 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 ba. um I was talking with someone would you consider Saturday Night Fever a musical? No. No. I think I think you could though. No, people don't break out in song. The the singers don't the the, the Yeah but the songs are no. propelling the the, the plot forward. No, they really don't. Like Dirty Dancing. There's, there's, it's just a great soundtrack. Yeah, I'd call it a great... Yeah. See, I think the, those are the musicals of now. I mean, it's no cop rock. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what is, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People furiously Googling. Yeah. Matthew Anderson is trying to find the pictures. <laughs> Good luck on that one. <laughs> no, he probably uh, that'll Matthew be Anderson. there. Though that show's legendary. Matthew Matthew Anderson will find pictures of Cop Rock. Trust me. Um, I'm convinced he's in the NSA. <laughs> I'm convinced he's precognitive. <laughs> Louis D'Onofrio found Xanadu, so we're we're already on the right track. That's okay, Louis, but that's not Olivia Newton John Xanadu. No, but it is. That's the only Xanadu is Olivia Newton John <laughs> <laughs> and Gene Kelly. Yes, and she, and Electric Light mm -hmm. Orchestra. 
Oh, okay. So what were we talking about? Oh, we were going back to. Um, oh, Robert Ray is you young, silly man, you. I know. Some people don't know. Some people don't know, and we're about to we're about to taint their little minds. He said taint. I said taint. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper's back! Yay, Yay Jasper! Uh, um, yes, Cop so, Rock is a fan film. And <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then the next uh, article that we're going to touch on briefly is, of course, Shatner's. Somebody, I love how this happens, right? Every time a new Star Trek production or a movie or something comes out. Um, uh, somebody inevitably asks William Shatner, if asked, will you appear? The man has never said no. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, he has never said no. Of course he'll appear as Captain Kirk. So, of course, the question was asked, if asked to appear in the new uh, Star Trek television show, which is due to be released in January of 2017 on CBS All Access, yes, you have to pay for it, people. <sighs> Um, William Shatner said, of course I will. <laughs> he just wasn't asked. No, he was Yeah, oh. <laughs> he, just, he was asked by the journalist. He wasn't asked by the, the no, show yet. No, that's what I mean. He just wasn't asked by the producer. <laughs> so there's a great, the, if you want to read about how William Shatner will, of course, play Captain Kirk again, if asked, you can read the Hollywood Reporter article. Um, I think it's adorable. I just, it, it is a consistent, there's something... If somebody hadn't had ha, hadn't asked him this question, I would have been very bummed out because there's like a tradition now. <laughs> yeah, and and Stewart has, has said before, uh, also probably because he was asked, uh, that he would r reprise the role of Picard. So you know, I mean, it, it, I'm glad to see that you know some of the captains would definitely return to reprise those roles. Well, I think that Sir Ian McKellen probably taught. Or had, you know, he had this, such a great relationship with Patrick Stewart, probably said, hey, look, you know, embrace these roles because this is, let's face it, this is what you're in the popular culture. This is what you're going to be remembered for. And there's nothing wrong with it. And Sir Ian has proven that it's okay to be Gandalf and it doesn't take away from your Henry V. It yep. just doesn't. So um, <clears throat> if anything, it brings more people to Shakespeare. I'm yeah. utterly convinced of that. I think these two amazing actors, even even Shatner, I mean, look at what he did with Boston Legal. Um, it, it drew more people to Boston Legal because his character was so insane. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a gateway to the actor rather than, you know, right. and his work. So it just because they know him from this little cheesy sci-fi sci television show from way back when... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's become such a beloved character that, that they will follow the actor wherever they go, and, and that, that's an, a, a built-in fan base. Four words. Kingdom of the Spiders. Yeah. Uh, what? That's not, a sh movie Shatner was in in the 70s. Well, not everything oh. they do has to be great. I'm just saying. <laughs> Kingdom of the Spiders. Tarantulas <laughs> everywhere. Before arachnophobia. Oh no! This was this was real tarantulas, like hundreds mm -hmm. of them crawling over him. Oh, so like Ben for spiders? Yeah, I think it was yeah. a musical too. It was not a musical. <laughs> tarantula, tarantula, <laughs> furry little spider crawling on my arm. Star Trek oh, yeah, musical like theater. I think that we have a, a title. <laughs> we have a title. Episode. Tarantula. <laughs> it's around my feet. <laughs> Hey, it bites you. See them. Kill <laughs> Exoskeleton for the win. <laughs> um, so we'll save the segue. Now that Jespa is back, do we want to divert our attention or do we want to keep moving forward? We Let's see if she forward. can hang, if her computer hangs. Can she hear anything we're saying? That's the I, real question. I can actually hear you, and, and I'm, I'm hearing every syllable, I think. So. Yay. We're going Symbolance. Symbolance. <laughs> Karaoke turkey. Yeah, so we'll save that one for the segue, and then we'll, we'll, we'll just, because I know that it kind of goes back to our, our coffee clutch, really. 
is how our week was. And um, uh, yeah, we all kind of had a, a, an unusual week and it was kind of sucky and, and yet at the same time, just kind of ridiculous. <clears throat> so where do we start? I mean, when we talk about um, how we kind of got dragged into, um, once again, got dragged into the Axe and R drama. I made something Star Trek. Unofficial Productions. Well, it was kind of my fault because I had had it with something. Well, <laughs> or should, my sh should we begin with um, R and B? Yeah. Okay, that's a really good way to start. Um, this week. What, what do you want to do that or chronologically? Well, chronologically, it would be your post first, then. Yeah. And then his post last. <laughs> <laughs> Ex post facto. I'm just saying. It's sandwich. It was book it, bookends. You so, wish, lady. <clears throat> So yeah, Nick, you you posted on your own page on Facebook. Um, there was a question we had heard. Actually, no, we had read that 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 Alec had filed what's called a C and D, a cease and desist against. Um, it continues, correct? Against Star well, Trek continues, and this was supposed to be a while back. I mean, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to educate myself on this on this thing where somebody said, or actually, Alec said that he filed. And served a C and D against Axon, uh, not Axon R, but against Star Trek Continues. For what exactly? Um, he, he thought that somebody was talking ill about him. Correct? Yes, he claimed that uh, he served a C and D against Vic uh, because Vic was uh, spreading libel and, and all of this. So I said, "Would you mind sharing that with uh, with us?" Right. So we can see it. And then I edited my message and said, and not a message from you saying stop it, but proof that it was served and signed for. Okay. And the and signed for is, the, is probably the best way to do it because cease and desist letters are not something that you file with a court. They are something that you literally just throw in the mail. And if you really want to prove to somebody that you have served them with this, you have to do it by certified mail, the old fashioned way where you put a big green sticker on the back of it and you force the person to sign it. So the person who sent it said, oh, I know they received it. It's he, a way to, to cover your butt. Comment, we had to send Vic a cease and desist because of his defamatory comments. We had multiple people tell us about. So he sent a cease and desist. Okay. It, it was based on hearsay? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and so it, it started a discussion. I honestly didn't – I really didn't think he would respond to it. It was just kind of me venting. And yet um, he and did. You know, he did. <laughs> and it started a discussion about C&Ds, and Jesse Heineck brought up some good points. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Adrian. And then Vic spoke. Oh, he did? I'm not Vic. Alex, Alex spoke. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, Michelle Speck actually said to address this question, I can truthfully say no C&D was ever received. This is the actual fact of the matter. Oh, okay. So so essentially what this is is the people – Vic Vic says he never received it. And Alec said check his email. Okay. His email. And then – Alex said, uh, I don't know if the GN team would then use the C and D to attack me. I would be happy to show you. And in fact, I will be happy to show you if you want to come by my office. I just won't publish it. Uh, also, I would love to hear how you justify 18 months of Vic's defamation and lies claiming we embezzled money on Prelude to Axnar. Please tell me how he did was right. Oh, and we have multiple people who would sign affidavit saying that Vic did this. And I responded by saying he takes questions yeah. as attacks. Yeah. And this is this is this is where I really I, I well he ended I up. I don't understand that. Paranoia. Didn't he apologize though? Because we told him, "Look, we're not accusing you. We're just asking what's going oh, on." That was hours later. Yeah, well, but, it, but it did happen. It did happen. Let's it did, that. because we had a lengthy back and forth. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, and I'm trying to find... Oh, here it is. Um, of course, he had to tell me he was a lawyer by training. Yes. Um, and he, at one point, he did make me laugh out loud. 
Yes. I have to say, because I said, you know, as a PR person by training and profession for almost 30 years, and a phrase I live by when questioned about legal matters is I cannot comment due to ongoing legal, uh, ongoing litigation. Right. And his response was no comment with a <laughs> smile. <laughs> and I'm going to admit that made me laugh. Which, which, and it was, and, and I did read that and I did laugh out loud and I did mm -hmm. have to say, well, God damn it. And here's the thing. God damn it. It's about time. But unfortunately, it didn't end there. Um, <clears throat> no, because he did say, upon reflection, my questioning your motives for wanting me to get a note from the lawyer, because it devolved into him trying to say that we were stupid for him wanting to get a lawyer. Well, we're and, look, and I was trying to say, look, we honestly are are, we're, are looking at your best interests in that. We if, really are. And, and and this is what it and this is what frustrates and this is what frustrated me is 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 look if there's one thing that we do appreciate, <clears throat> you know what? Every other podcast and every other every other podcast that's out there and anybody who's a journalist or even just an internet, everybody else would probably go, oh yeah, that's great. We got, we can bring Alec on and we can bring Robert Meyer Burnett on and we can have them talk to us if they're willing to talk to us about the litigation. Yeah. It's a scoop, right? I, my gut just said there's something wrong here. And, and that's the reason why we move forward with it is that we are, I I also know that how perceptions can how how perceptions can be used twisted created from uh, from everybody out there and I don't want to put our show into a position I would rather lose an interview with somebody than to be perceived as somebody who trapped somebody mm -hmm. in a conversation yes that's all there is to it I would rather somebody else get the scoop then have and have them have their their listeners or their viewers or their readers go god that was kind of mean then then be put then put the gnt in a position which this is not what our show is about it's not about trapping people it's not about creating animosity it's really we're trying to cover what's going on in the fandom and since we cover unofficial production we really do want to talk about it. However, that being said, after Alec posted this and, and after Nick posted this and that conversation <laughs> ended and it ended surprisingly. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 Alec apologized trying to, to us about the intent of what we were trying to question. The fact of the matter yeah, here, is, yeah, here's what he said. He said, upon reflection, my questioning your motives for wanting me to get a note from the lawyer was an inappropriate, was an inappropriate for you asking me to get the C and D. I apologize. I need to take your word for that as despite me not liking the attitude of your show and yeah. finding it rather belligerent, you have given me no cause to doubt your sincerity. So I do apologize for that assumption. And that meant a lot because we know that Alec doesn't, let's face it, we know Alec doesn't like us and that's okay. I, yeah. I, I'm not going it's to reality. Change. Yeah, it is reality and it's our opinions and we have what I'll probably end up reading here in a little bit is what I call an intractable, uh, an intractable, intractable, I can't even talk, a difference of opinion. So, yes. it, it, and that's okay. Alec doesn't have to like us. I'm not here and we're not here so people like us. And you know what? We've been belligerent for four and a half years now. That's and, never going to change. But just because we ask questions yeah. doesn't mean we're attacking. No. You may not like the questions, and that's fine. But that doesn't mean we're attacking. And just because we ask questions doesn't mean we're haters. We have members of this show, Axonar people, who have donated on more than one occasion to your fundraising. Yeah. It's true. So story. If if that makes if that makes us haters, um, you should have more haters like us. We also we also happen to have people in our group, <clears throat> me, um, who have had experience with previous, um, shall we say, fan organized, fan funded. Um, <laughs> Are you talking about dead gun? We're talking about dead gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, project. Project. We're talking about fed gun. We're, we're, it, it, that have fallen apart and people have lost a lot of money. And Look, 
so we have that perspective as well. I, and that's where these questions are going to arise from. And I was thinking about this last night, just prepping my, mentally for the show. Yes, I actually do that, people. <laughs> There's something that I, I really need to say here. There's a lot of questions people and donors have, um, and, and I'm going to get into the cult thing in a second because evidently that really hurts Alex's feelings that I talk about the cult. But that that we'll get to that. But if anyone doubts, I, I don't doubt for a second that Alec had this idea for the Garth story, the Garth of Izar story. And, and and loves the idea and is committed to it. That I don't doubt that for one second that he he loves the accent. There's other things that are revolving around the the production of this film that are the questions. I, I've seen people say things like from the beginning this is all been. I, I I honestly believe that this idea. And this story are something very meaningful to him. So please, let's not confuse. It, I, I don't believe that this was a fucking um, Bernie Madoff situation. You, you know what I? You know what I mean, Terry? Did I lose everybody? <laughs> she stepped away for a moment. Oh, yeah. okay. But, it, but I think she agrees with you on that. It's not. It's not like that. It's. It, it, it. I don't think there was ever. A thought that there was going to be like, oh, we're trying to do something illicit or anything. I think their intentions are completely uh, pure from the beginning that they wanted to do this production and felt very strongly about it. But and then what happens? It, it was mission creep. The dream expanded and expanded and expanded. Yes, I would agree yes. with that. <clears throat> and expanded and expanded. But and let's let's. Let's not and, and, and went and from fan production to professional. The idea of the backstory yeah. of Garth of Izar is very interesting. Yes, that is why some of us on this show donated. Yes, yep. it's a cool idea and it's a good idea. So people that are just going, people that are doing what the Axonar Naval Infantry are doing from the other <laughs> side of it are just as wrong as what those people are doing. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I yeah. just needed to say that. Yeah, it, it's um like I said, it's an unfortunate situation that is um uh and and will continue to probably expand as <clears throat> questions are asked because a lot of questions have not yet been answered. One of the things I said on the show two weeks ago. Gosh, I think I've said it on every show that ever since the lawsuit was filed is, you know, my, my, my concerns about, you know, from the donor aspect of it. And here's the thing, what cracks me up about this whole thing is that somehow there's, there's in their minds, everybody says it does, it doesn't matter what other people think. The only, the only people who have a right to care about how the money was spent were the donors. That's not true. Well, I'm a donor Definitely and I true. do care. And yes. I'm asking these questions and I can't get an answer. Right. And so I, I, how am I supposed to feel? I'm, I'm getting angry. Oh, and, and there are people. And you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. There, are, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there are people and this, I, I, I haven't seen this from, from Alec himself. It, it may have happened. I'm not saying it didn't, but I, ha I personally have not seen it from him. But there are people on message boards and stuff who say, well, it's not like you mortgaged your house donating. Would you give $10? You are the worst scum of all. To say, yeah. you're, you're an elitist pig is what you are. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm just going to say what you are. You're a fucking twat waffle. Okay? <laughs> because for you to say, well, you only gave $10. How do you know that $10 isn't a big deal to that person. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, the, the, the thing that bothers me, that truly, truly bothers me, is that the this attitude is that you buy the right to ask questions mm -hmm. and that the questions are expensive. And let me tell you something, that ain't true, folks. <laughs> as, as a society, not just as a fandom, but as a society, we have every right to ask questions about 
this sort of thing. I mean, you know, you can certainly ask questions about, uh, do you think that this, um, you know, that this, that this project is viable? And uh, do you think this project was well managed? Do you think this project is possible? And, the, uh, you know, and, and where did these, did these funds go? And, and where are they coming from? And where are they going? And what are the, what are the figures? These are very reasonable questions. And, and uh, as I said before, uh, these questions, they are not slander, they are not libel. This is not defamation to ask questions. And I didn't give a dime, folks. I'm not a donor. I'll tell you that right now. I got a right to ask questions. Mike did donate and he's got a right to ask questions too. But he didn't donate for the right to ask questions. He didn't put he didn't pony up and ante up and and throw cash on the barrel head and say uh, now I get a chance to ask questions. No, it's not that's not the way it works, people. And you know what? This is really funny and y'all are going to laugh at this. I have been racking my brains. I am trying to remember if because you know some of these kickstarters and stuff were a while ago and i'm trying to remember if i've donated or not and i honestly can't remember <laughs> i think i did but i'm not sure i i, I may not have i but i can't find where i did and i um it may have even been prelude that's how long ago it was I, you know that's what i'm thinking too is back to prelude but there's something else that's going on because during all of this Alex said something about our echo chamber. Um, we have never, and I want to make this clear. <clears throat> we have never banned anybody, locked anybody out, or anything like that for asking a question. There are some groups who, if you are not, and this is where the cult thing comes in, 100% lockstep in back, locks lockstep with what they want you to say. You get banned. And blocked. And I'm looking at the Axnar fan page. I will say it outright. Anyone who doesn't agree gets blocked. How do we know that? Because we know people this has happened to. Donors. Donors to Axanar who have asked questions and been blocked. What that builds is an echo chamber where now people post, and I'm not sure if they were trolling or not, but frankly, I don't think they were, people saying, Alex should have a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What? Who? What? <laughs> I it, can't even. It, 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 it's... it's it can get kind of scary over there. I've seen, I've, I've seen some posts that make me afraid for some of these people uh, because they are they are so enamored. I, I, I don't I don't even think that's the right word, but it, it, they're they, they they are they don't want to think about that that what they what they've thrown their support behind is. Can be wrong. But, or and and be here's wrong. the thing: these are fans that also want to see this thing being made. They want it to be made. Well, exactly. so do I. But I don't want it to to. I want it to be done reasonably, correctly, correctly properly. Not, but what does that but, mean? Here's the question: what? what does that mean? Does that mean at a two million dollar budget, or well, does it mean just getting it out the door? I, I just did this was again something I thought of last night. I actually I couldn't sleep last night. And I went, and and I was doing a lot of thinking, which everyone beware. Um, <laughs> Terry, I know you haven't seen the Battlestar Galactica re relaunch. I saw with, ten minutes of it. I know, and That's based the, same the whole thing on that ten minutes. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> that's like basing an entire series on code of honor okay <laughs> i'm just saying threshold threshold which, yeah, which threshold. i understand garrett wong has done and hasn't seen any other tng well, so that's because he well that's because it's not because he wants to it's because god has a plan for him that every time he turns on tng that's <laughs> it's the code of honor <laughs> um Squirrel by people, banning squirrel. anyone who thinks differently. Now, Mike, you've seen the the relaunch, the, the Ronald D. Moore Battlestar, right? Yes. Okay. What you get is Gaius Boltar and his followers. All these Interesting. people who just look up with reverence and don't ask questions. 
You know what? And I'm though? not. I'm not saying that's what the plan is, but that's... in an effort to stifle any questions because they make you uncomfortable, this is what you get. Yeah. And and <clears throat> okay. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to remember how this week we received um, a request uh, to appear on our show. Oh, the tweet. And um, I got this. I got this message. So, in essentially, for our listeners, we were asked by um, Robert Meyer, Meyer Burnett, the director of Star Trek or of Axanar, I had to take the Star Trek out. Of, it's not Star Trek. <laughs> Um, of Axanar to appear on our show so he could address some of the questions that we had. Um, he apparently posted a request to appear on our show in a comment section in our site underneath one of our show's notes. Is that correct? It yes. Was a, it was a Facebook yes. comment to a, to a blog post. It was so, a oh, yeah, uh, uh, that that, that that's what it was. Pog- oh, to a, to one of the fan dances. Uh, oh, no, we're in our no, to an episode regular recap. podcast. It was yeah. the Axanar, the Axa. Uh oh. Okay, uh, so episode. it was actually one of our blog posts, posted yes. shows, and it was the comment section, which is connected to Facebook. Yes. Okay. And we didn't receive the, any notification. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't. Which have we, the, it, thank we you fixed. because you uh, you showed us that we had a glitch in our system. We had a glitch and in our system. It we has appreciate been, this. It's been fixed. So. Right. Um. So, um, <clears throat> we apologized to well, Mr. Burnett for not following up with him because well, he started to tweet. Well, I had a tweet. rather lengthy Twitter. Uh, it was 11 posts in Twitter where, I, again, the show was – we were all discussing behind the scenes. And all of us said, no, I don't have anything in my inbox. And I kind of had a thing where I was like, y- you know what? No. If you've got something, because he called us posers. See, we can't leave that <laughs> what are we out. posing as? That we he know? said he offered to come on the show and we never responded. Oh, posers, posers, yeah. Oh, that's that Again, hurts. That's taking the high road. That's that, that showing hurts. us. Yeah, yeah. We and by the way, I also said in those in those eleven posts, we offered a long time ago for him to come on the show, and he said no. <laughs> So and now as you're he should leave. have, <laughs> because and now, now see, I'm getting I'm getting frustrated again because we have a contact us button to leave something like that. If you want to come on the show, we have a contact us button. You're a professional. You should understand that's how that works. Okay. So one of the things that came out <laughs> because of this, we fixed it. We bought the plugin that now allows us to. Um, uh, get a notification when somebody leaves a comment on one of our um, previously posted um, blog posts or on our site. So thank you. We fixed it. Uh, we now know when uh, somebody uh, comments as a and, and wants us to um, get in touch with them. And um, it also led to a lengthy discussion for us. It, as, we've actually talked about the show in our in our staff meeting, <laughs> Fred, which we never do. We never do. Usually, we usually that's like the shit. The shit but this is yeah. <laughs> kidding. Um, we will we will have a Kickstarter to help us pay for the plugin, so now we can <laughs> hear this stuff <laughs> and build a studio. That too. Oh, ouch! Oh, oh boy. boy, you had to go there. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, Sorry. and here's the thing: is post. I wrote something that I was going to post on my own, and then I was asked to post it on 1701news.com, and I have decided to do neither. But I am going to read it, if you guys are okay with that. All right. Everybody settle back. Get your popcorn. Hold on. Hold on, Terry. I feel a meme coming into the chat room. Hold on one second. It is. Let me get something that I felt needed to be addressed, and and it is is my opinion. So excuse me while I read. Um, Okay. I'm going to. While she kisses the sky. (laughs) I kiss the guy? Sorry. And, and I will remind people, okay, by the way, that, that me opinion. Yeah. I, I will also remind people that opinion isn't slander or libel either. <laughs> Take it away. And it's funny how this how this piece starts off with those words. Um, I said uh, the words expressed here are mine. The opinions are mine. Uh, earlier this week, while I was at work, I read a direct message from a listener informing me that film director Robert Meyer Burnett had been tweeting his displeasure with the GNT show and our apparent lack of response to his offer to appear for an interview. 
I was at work and involved in a case that took priority. I let the team at GNT know what I had heard and asked them to look into it. Uh, later on, I was informed that Mr. Burnett had indeed offered to come on to the GNT show to be interviewed about the recent legal proceedings involving CBS and Paramount versus Axonar Productions revolving around the Axonar full-length film he's currently directing. It was discovered that Mr. Burnett posted his offer to appear on the show in the comments section under one of our show posts. It's true. Unfortunately, no one saw it, and when we discovered it didn't have when we discovered we didn't have a plug-in required um, that would have notified us when someone leaves a comment, and that was our bad. He, that has been rectified, and we are sorry that we missed it. However, I won't apologize that we didn't cover our, or hover over our comments section. Like I said before, I have a job that takes priority over the show and Star Trek. It's shocking, isn't it? Hopefully, the new plug-in will prevent the appearance of us ignoring anyone. We never meant to. With that said, and even though we got the new plug-in, if anyone ever wants to get in touch with us, there's a link on the site that says Contact Us. Or you can always just leave a voicemail using the handy little tab over to the right of the page. Or you can email us at hosts at gntshow.com. Please be aware, though, if you do leave us a recorded message, we might use it on the show, so don't be surprised. So... <laughs> Back to just where thinking I about was. a message we got. Just thinking about a message we got <laughs> yeah. this, this week. <laughs> that we're not using until next week. Yeah. Yeah. So back to where I was. Mr. Burnett did indeed reach out to discuss the concerns we've had with uh, uh, we've had with regard to the Axonar project and the litigation that has created a virtual brouhaha in the Star Trek fandom. Our team is currently considering taking Mr. Burnett up on his offer to appear. Since I wrote this, we have decided that we will not be interviewing Mr. Burnett for pretty much the same reason why we're not going to interview Alec. And that is he is a potential um, uh, party to the litigation. And as an employee, meaning he has been paid a salary uh, by Axonar Productions, he is indeed um, a potential defendant individually named as a doe um, as discovery proceeds. So we don't want to have him be put into a position where he says something that he might later regret. So that's that. Um, and I said, hi, I, however, would be refraining from participating in the interview. This was my decision before the team got together to talk about whether or not we would interview Mr. Burnett. Uh -uh. I said, well, the fact is, although we at the GNT show are not journalists, we're an opinion and an entertainment podcast. In light of several things that Mr. Burnett has posted on Facebook recently, I have to admit I've developed an opinion that many people will see as blatantly biased. So biased, in fact, that I'm afraid that my involvement with the interview would actually hinder its tone, its productivity, and even its usefulness. Simply put, Mr. Burnett and I have a very different opinion as to what's right. He has stated on Facebook that people misunderstand the definition between profit and salary and that those that criticize the idea of people making money working on a fan production are missing the point. He intimated that Axonar isn't making a profit and that people specific and that people specifically professionals in the film industry uh, deserve to be paid for their work on Axonar. He angrily opined that those critics who dare think that fan productions should be purely volunteer efforts are wrong. And he did use, although he did use some words, I won't really repeat. <clears throat> And it also appears as though he deleted those heated comments from the thread. Don't those critics know the costs associated with making a great film? Heck, don't they know how expensive the equipment is? Yes, Mr. Burnett, I do know that making a film is expensive. I also know that buying and or renting equipment to make those films is extraordinarily expensive because they're so unique. Computers for CGI, cameras, audio equipment, and tools to make the sets. They're all really, really expensive. Which is why, until the advent of crowdsourcing, fan production fan productions looked so cheaply made. Most individual people can't afford those high ticket items to help their fan production look like the real thing. But you know what? As a fan of the unofficial productions, as long as the story was good, I didn't care. Do I hate quality looking productions? No. Flat out, no. I don't hate them. I love them. We've been covering all of the unofficial productions since we started the podcast. We celebrate in the fans' tales as much as we do the official productions. But I care more about the integrity of the ownership of intellectual property. I care about it so deeply that I cannot interview Mr. Burnett and keep my own opinions from interfering with the expression of his. 
I simply think that with the facts as we now know, the executive team of Axonar Productions are in the wrong. I believe that they have built at least one business and have taken individual salaries all on the back of a property that they do not own, do not have the rights to, and have not paid for. I personally find these acts to be aberrant, detestable, and repugnant. I know many, many people who've worked on, who've worked their tails to the bone to create something wonderful, to develop new universes and characters with words, to paint and draw things that inspire the imagination, to tediously develop code that guides computers that allow people to hear and see and use amazing prosthetics. I know people who have written sublime music that renders the heart, sculpted unique pieces of art, created cities full of consistent signage, logos, and print materials that become a singular cohesive brand. These people inspire me. They work hard. They work damn hard and they own what they make. The very thought that someone could take their work, solicit donations from other people, then make molds of that work and claim it as their own infuriates me. If my friend who writes her own novels ever saw that another person crowdsourced funded a new publishing company where other people made money creating new books using her characters and universe, I wouldn't blame her for being upset. She worked hard on those books. She created amazing characters and a universe that is intriguing and exciting. She didn't mind when fans wrote stories in fanfic bulletin boards because those fans never missed buying her books when they came out and they never made money sharing their own fantasies of her work. If anything, that fandom was true and loyal and dependable, exactly what a, re a business relies upon. But I'm sure she'd be twice as pissed off if a crowd-funded company actually made books using her universe and characters so that it could compete directly with her. The only person or company who should be allowed to make money from the thing they created and or own is the person or company who created and or owns it. If Mr. Burnett cannot agree with this and he still believes that it's okay to be paid for working with property he doesn't own, then I can't talk to him. As a director of some amazing works, I would have thought he'd be far more sensitive to the issue, but alas, that does not seem to be the case. I don't care if CBS and Paramount are big companies. Just because they're big doesn't mean their property isn't any less important. Heck, their shareholders sure believe it is, and anyone who owns stock in any company that owns trademarked and or copyrighted material believes it's important, else they wouldn't have purchased the stock to begin. I just can't excuse the activities as I've seen exhibited by the Axonar team. I just don't think it's morally right to make money off of somebody else's property unless you were given explicit permission, in other words, a license of the property owner to do so. It's clear that the difference of opinion between me and Mr. Burnett is far too great for me to overcome without becoming extraordinarily unprofessional, and he really doesn't deserve to be treated in that fashion. I hope any potential interview with him at any site or show goes well. I'm not sure I'll listen to it. My mind on this topic was made up the moment the Axonar team tried to defend making salaries and creating a company on the back of another company's property. I'm confident that there is nothing he could say that would sway my opinion on that matter. I'll continue, continue to express these opinions on our show with my team because that's what I do on the GNT show and they're my opinions. And that's it. Just to add one more thing quickly. If, if I may, uh, in the complaint, I'm going to read this to you. Uh, there are 20 unnamed Doe defendants. They are defined in the complaint, and I'm quoting this as follows. The Doe defendants include, among others, those persons who aided in the writing of the scripts for the Axnar works, or producing or directing the films, and those persons who designed or caused to be designed the infringing sets, costumes, props, and other elements in the Oxnar works that infringe copyrighted Star Trek elements. End quote. Therefore, Mr. Burnett, I do believe, is within this set of people, as are many other folks who I will not name. So we have someone here who either already has legal counsel mm -hmm. or should be in the process of obtaining legal counsel. And as the, was the case with Mr. Peters. The same is true of Mr. Burnett and anyone else in this subset of Doe defendants. If they are 
represented by counsel, or they will be represented by counsel, and God knows they should be, then we are under an obligation to make sure that if we interview them, that their counsel knows what is happening and has signed off on it. Yeah. Same same rules apply, folks. And, so, and you know, for haters, that's why we're... we sure are going out of our way to, like, <laughs> you look know, out and make sure that they don't fuck themselves. And here's, and yes. here's, yeah, I, I totally agree. And Louis D'Onofrio put in the in the chat room, It's a, it, and, and it is a concern. And it's something that we kind of lightly touched on in our conversations uh, in our team yesterday. And that was, it sounds from, he goes, then all fan films will be shut down from the way it sounds from your words. You know what? It's our concern. It, it really is. It is a concern. One of the, you know, one of the alleged uh, defenses that we understand that um, Axenar's attorney is is looking at now there's no proof that she's done this yet or how because we haven't seen the response the response to the complaint isn't even due until like the 20th yeah i was gonna say February 22nd. 20th or 22nd okay, yeah. yeah it's 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 not even due until like the end of the month and so we don't really know what their defenses are going to be um however she i has, forgot yeah she has Your mentioned Honor, that i forgot <laughs> that ip infringement was against the law awesome you may go now <laughs> Um, is is this idea of um, it, not a, it, it's it, it, of waiver that they're going to try or that they might make the attempt to say that their defense is that CBS waived their right <clears throat> to enforce their copyright? I'm sorry, I'm laughing through that because it's, the idea of it's just so ludicrous. But that's what they're going to try to do is say that because CBS never came out and write right out and said you can't do this that they waive their right to be able to say you can't do this. That's really what a waiver means. And that they waive their ability to to enforce their copyright um, because they they passively didn't go out and say you can't do this. That in in my opinion, if they if Axenor succeeds on that defense, they will have killed not just fan fiction for Star Trek, not just fan productions for Star Trek. They will have killed Fan productions for everyone. Do you, the, the precedent that this would set would be exceptionally burdensome of any person who owns a copyright in the fact that they would now have to hire somebody to monitor the internet to determine whether or not somebody was doing something unofficial so they could expressly enforce their copyright on everybody, which is physically impossible. And I am, I, I, I can't imagine that they would be successful. I hope that they are not because I don't think that individually published. And this is my concern, you guys. It's not CBS. It's not Paramount. We're talking about the individual published author, right? What about all of these indie published authors that now have copyrighted material out there? Do they have to be forced to have a, a, a they have to now create a company to go out and search the internet to see if somebody's done a fan production based on their work just so they can enforce their copyright? And you may laugh at me and go, oh, Terry, that's not what we mean to do. But I'll tell you what, legally, that's the, that is the foundation you're beginning to lay. And Law if that's, of unintended consequences. If, 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 yes, that's what you. You're, if that's what you're going after, then, then, then fuck you. <laughs> Just fuck you. <laughs> I'm just pissed because I, the idea that that's what you are trying to do and, and that you are willing to take down not just the fan productions of Star Trek and the fan community in Star Trek, but that you are willing to risk the idea that nobody should be able to be inspired or use creative or volunteer, volunteer, Mr. Burnett, to participate in something fun and something wonderful, then, the, then you will be able to, if, if that's the way it turns out, then I will be then I pity you in the in the burden that you will have and being the at, at having to to live with the sorry I, 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 I'm furious you guys this is me well, when I'm uh, really angry yeah. it, it, they will yeah. they will have to live with that brand for the rest of their well, life as being the people who destroyed fandom there's there's a the goalpost has shifted several times we're a fan production we're a professional production we're a professional fan production what 
make up your mind, first of all. Don't keep <laughs> shifting the goalposts. Yeah. See, these are the kind of questions that get people banned from their Facebook page. Are you a fan production or are you professional? Oh, well, we're professional. Well, then where's your licensing agreement with CBS? Well, we don't need one because we're doing a fan film. No, you just said you're a professional. And, and, and then and, the other side of it is I deserve a salary because I'm making this. No, you don't. If you're doing it because you love this story and you want to make it and share it, that's great. You're doing it out of love. You're not doing it because CBS hired you to do this. Hey, you know what? I love books. I'm going to go down to uh, Barnes & Noble and I'm going to work there for the day dealing with books and doing all of this. And then I'm going to tell them, oh, by the way, where's my paycheck? <laughs> It's, 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 yeah, I kind of, I kind of met my personal, my personal end to, to, to it. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm there. And so, yeah, call me, call me biased all you fucking want to, because you know what I am. I am. I'm, I really, I'm there. These are people who took a salary, a salary. They've, they have taken donors money to capitalize an independent venture. They have built at, like I said, at least one business on the backs of the Star Trek IP that they don't own. Well, and they're and they're and well, go ahead, breathe, Terry, breathe. Mm. And and to finish on something that we started all this with, Alec did send me the C and D that he says he sent. Yes. To Vic. The problem is, it was just a letter. There was nothing that showed it was signed for. I was pretty clear by saying I'd like to see. Where it was signed for, and and here's then the other he thing. Says, so he said he said he sent it by email. Well, fucking send us the copy of the email with the timestamp on it that said that you sent it. Well, then the beauty of this is he says, "Oh, so that's the game you want to play? You're going to change it to that now?" No, that's what I said from the beginning. Yeah, was please send that. See, this is the kind of shell game. And then there's people that are go, "Oh, they're such haters." No, it's not a hater. To ask a question, and I don't, and and, and, and what cracks me up again? Inflammatory commentary. I'm just going to say this to say, well, the haters that are asking these questions. Do you know what that leads to? That leads to the kind of mindset where people who blindly believe everything you say, i.e., like a cult, <laughs> then start to just see it as. Well, we can threaten, as they have, people who don't agree with us. And oh, by the way, when you threaten lawsuits every 10 seconds and then say, well, I never did that. And then I post where you threatened it and you get pissed. Don't get mad at me because you threatened somebody and we're shown with a, to be a liar by and, saying and here's you never the thing. did that. Yeah, it, oh. and here's the thing. What we were talking about in that post, just in case anybody was saying, is that we were discussing the fact that Alec threatened a lawsuit against somebody. He yeah, threatens Mike litigation. Ceridium. He never threatens anybody bodily. Okay? But that's not what no, we mean by all. using the term threaten. He never he never threatens anybody bodily, but he sure damn well threatens everybody with litigation. If he doesn't like them or he thinks you've done something wrong, he'll be he'll send you a cease and desist saying, Stop saying bad things about me because really I think that's what that C and D was about. Oh, I'm expecting one. And and stop saying, you know no. No, I'm, I'm, we're not saying he's threatened, threatening people in a bodily fashion. Absolutely not. No, but he threatens lawsuits. But he does threaten lawsuits. He does threaten litigation. And then gets mad when you call him out on it. Yeah. And by the way, um, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. uh, uh, Sorry to interrupt, but um, something that, that you had uh, touched on that um, during, during your, 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 your reading of your, Mm -hmm. your post. Of the minutes. (laughs) Um, uh, something that came to my mind is, uh, why does a a production need $2 million? And I I made me wonder, and I asked the the chat room, couldn't everything from a film production standpoint, studio, cameras, lighting, all that stuff be rented? Yes. 
And couldn't, there's lots of opportunities to do that in that area. And there, there couldn't it, they? I mean, the only thing that they really have to buy and 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 and, and create is you know their sets, their the things that 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 cannot be rented, things that they would have to the unique items, right. the costumes, did not the, yeah, right. the cost. They did not have to build an entire studio. No, and outfit it. And offices and all, all this stuff is rentable, and it could have been done for a fraction, right? I, 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 renting something for a one-shot film is what maybe a couple months of, of you know of, of time rather than years. <laughs> I, I don't know. It just it just seems like they could still have produced something high quality, still for a lot less than yeah. And they've made um, this, when the lawsuit was filed, of course, the uh, Indiegogo campaign and, the, and well, Kickstarter was finished. Um, they, they met their Kickstarter goal. Indiegogo was still up and running until the lawsuit was filed, in which case Indiegogo, there's, there's a difference of what they say was done. Indiegogo said that they stopped the campaign to in, begin an investigation. Uh, Alec and his team have said that they stopped the Indiegogo campaign. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure which was which. Um, you can take their word for it both ways. Maybe they simultaneously agreed to stop it. I don't know. Um, and that's where this this figure of 1.1 million dollars comes from. And it was like 600 and something thousand dollars from Kickstarter and 570 some odd thousand dollars from Indiegogo. And both of these companies take a percentage of the donations as a fee for using their services. Um, and I don't know, uh, Kickstarter was funded. So we know that they were able to use that money and that's where the financial, these financials have been based upon. So when there, anybody ever saw, well, they were transparent. They showed us how much money that they spent. That was all the Kickstarter money. I have never seen, and now we do not. And, and now they have withdrawn permissions, uh, to view the, um, the financial reports that they said that they, that used to be available. Um, and I have, n I personally have never seen a, an outline for the money that was spent or received from Indiegogo. So I don't know if they cashed out the Indiegogo campaign when it was fulfilled or when they reached their goal. Um, or if Indiegogo froze the entire amount of money, which would have been just over a half a million dollars. So either Either that money is sitting with Axonar or it's sitting with Indiegogo. I don't know. Um, but either way, we haven't, I have not seen how that money was spent at all. Um, so these are, these are questions, people. I'm not saying that anything done, was done wrong with this money. I'm not. But what I am saying is that these are questions that remain unanswered. Did they spend the money? Did they receive the money from Indiegogo? And if they did, did they spend it? And if they did spend it, I think the donors have a right to know how much. The, and you know what? I think everybody has a right to know how that money was spent. If you are a fan production. We are all fans. And the fact of the matter is, is how did you spend my fellow fans money? Um, and, and the beauty is, is that it, it's not burden on the G and T show to do this investigation, to do anything. We're not, we're not responsible for it at all. However, if you are a donor and you do have questions because we are getting some emails and some voicemails from some people who feel that maybe things th that they would like to have, like Mike have answers to their questions i am the, not the only one he is trust me we have a say, rather, he's not oh, the only far one. from being the only one we have a very emotional voicemail that was left for us and we decided not to post it because it was so emotional and because we didn't tell people at that point in time you know what we might use your your voicemail on the show now we if did, that person we, wants to give us permission he wants to give us permission to use that voicemail we will but it was it, it was heartbreaking and this person, it, again, it goes back to the to the to the asshole who said, "Well, how much money did you did you did you donate?" Like somehow the level of your donation means that your loss means more, and I mean loss. Oh, you got did. a tote bag. That means you gave this much. No, stop. Yeah, well, no, it it people didn't it it these a lot of people gave yeah, the, what they could, but yes, uh, there are exactly uh, some people who gave probably gave more than they probably really should have. 
um, comfortably. And, we know people who are I, given... My heart goes out to them, you know, because they, ho- they were hoping to, to get something amazing. And in, in return, they've got nothing to show for it. Nothing. So, Terry, well, wait, Alan, don't Alan we know somebody but, that's given in six figures? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's that's one of the, the, the problems with crowdfunding as well, too, is that, you know, you're really only guaranteed. Um, and I don't know if it's a guarantee, but, you know, if you're guaranteed a prize for donating a certain amount, like a, a tote bag or whatever, that's really all you, they're entitled to get you. They can, I mean, let's face it, there's no guarantee yeah. that they're going to do whatever they're going to do. And I'm not talking about just accident. I'm talking about any kind of crowdsourcing. Right. You know, I have a product I want to develop. Give me some money and I'll give you a little T-shirt for donating. But at the end of the day, there's no obligation to actually fulfill that 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 original project and if i gave you the tote bag well then i gave you what i promised you yeah but uh, and but and there might be a time to get some uh some some governmental oversight into crowdfunding folks oh, God. Some of the, i'm just some throwing that, that out there right now the libertarian in me just some of the cringe. things that they've been promising though you just said a, you just said a chill up uh nick's spine uh, <laughs> some of the things that they've been promising he likes it, though, though for all three of the the fundraisers one of the donate one of the the items that they promised was the finished film for all three fundraisers that sounds and like yet, buying the film well and it well it, it, it is one yes, of the it things sounds like yes. that doesn't it i mean but the you know sort of the even the people who crowdsource that honey thing right yeah. the honey yeah that's one of the if you donated $400 you got one of the product and yeah. and a lot of those are i would have to say i i'm hearing more and more successful things about but there's always that what Janet and I have touched on before. There's always those terms of services that you have with it, both Kickstarter and Indiegogo, where they say, "Hey, look, if you're donating money, there's no guarantee that the people who are asking for the money are going to come through." <coughs> um, and to a degree, Axenar has also said that. Yeah, I think what bothers a lot of people is the fact that you know that they made Prelude for to, to Axenar for eighty something thousand dollars, I think, and they raised a hundred and one. And so they were, they, and they did, they developed Prelude for Axonar and they got it done. They got it out. And that's what made everybody so damn excited about the ideas. Like, okay, now here's our big trailer, um, for the big in, uh, the, for the big film that we're going to make. And we, we're going to make this film for what was it that the, the Kickstarter 600 and some hundred thousand dollars. And for so haters, ma- we sure did talk glowingly about prelude on the show. I still do. Yeah, I still do haters. about the Vulcan scene for fuck's sake. It's beautiful, but damn it. It, 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 the 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 first Kickstarter campaign comes through and successful. Yay, we're going to get the film. And then you find out, oh, no, we're going to ask for another half a million. Oh, yay, we're going to get a, a – uh, we're not going to get the film. We're going to get a bigger film. And now the last I had heard was that they were going to ask for yet another million dollars and to make it an even bigger film. And so that goalpost kept moving back. And that's when my antennas start to go up. And that is – why couldn't you why couldn't you have done something less quality? I realize that's not what you guys really want to do, but the fact of the matter is just why don't don't just finally do it. Just do it. I'm just sorry, I'm picturing it. Shia LaBeouf. Do it! Just do, do it! it! Do it! <laughs> just do it! Now I I have a question. Now, Janet, correct me if I'm wrong, you are a graduate of law school and admitted to the bar, correct? Uh, yes, and I okay. practice law too. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get that out of the way that, you know, you're a lawyer by training. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Not just by if, training. It, now, we're, most of us on the show are old enough to remember the yellow pages. If Absolutely. I were to post, look up in the yellow pages and then say, hey, this is where Janet's Jewish Emporium is located. <laughs> is that doxing? <laughs> Oh, are we going no. there? Oh, no. oh, yeah, we're going there because that that's another thing that I he went off on that the the whole oh, okay. thank you Matthew Anderson. That is one of my favorite things in the world. I could watch that <laughs> on a loop forever. All right, all right. It, the reason why we're laughing is is not because of doxing, trust me. We're laughing because he posted the, 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 the LaBeouf, just do it in the chat. I could watch that for hours. All right, all right. Um, addresses, public records. Okay. 
uh, everybody's address is a public record, folks. Let's just let's just start with that. Your address is out there. Uh, why? Because you get mail, people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is this is the reality, and and really the um, and if you want to protect an address, okay, you can't perfectly protect an address because it's not, it's just not possible. But if you want to protect an address, one of the best ways you can do it is keep it off public documents. Now you can't keep it off like your, your tax rolls and you can't keep it off ownership rolls, but you sure as hell can keep it off of a, uh, a listing of a place where a co- corporation is headquartered. Right. If you need, if you need an address for where a corporation will be headquartered, uh, you can get one. Like uh, I did. It's it, it's not that hard, and it's not that expensive. Legal Zoom, twenty bucks. There you go. <laughs> or, or even go down to the post office and pick up a, a safety deposit, or not a safety deposit box, safety like deposit a post office box, box with a, a post number. office yeah. box. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of options and you did not have to use well uh, your house a particular address, address. right yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. yeah go ahead janet or we no done? no i'm done okay well it's... because the two cl- and, and first of all it, doxing is not illegal to begin with well right? it's it's it, shitty. unless you're threatening someone well that's the thing but and, and you guys question, know and you guys know I what say... i've gone through with gamergate right yes Okay, but so, to th- say that Janus Jewish Emporium is located. <laughs> so help me God, if there's a real place called Janus Jewish Emporium, we apologize now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this. Is, and sorry. we're gonna visit. And we're totally ja- coming. All right, Janus Jaunty Jewish Emporium. There, there you go. <laughs> and, and and I say, I have questions about her matzo ball soup, um, but I see it's that authentic. her business is located at. 12 matzo ball way and then she comes back and says you son of a bitch my parents are living there um but it's listed as a business and no no one knew that your parents were living there yeah you're the one that just revealed that fact (laughs) yeah (laughs) the prudent thing for me to do is a couple of things number one move my folks number two move my business yeah you know, hey, it, this isn't. Th- these are not hard things to do, and no matter what, if I'm the one who's telling you, hey, my folks live there, um, that's not doxing. That's me admitting that somebody actually lives at this address. Yeah, that's me opening my mouth and saying it. Uh, that's not doxing in any stretch of the imagination of of the definition. It, yeah. it just plain isn't. Yeah, And we, we've said on this show, but this really needs to be said, if anybody has tried to break in or, or do anything illegal against Daxnar, you're a bigger scumbag than anybody. Uh, there is Completely no doubt about that. For. Absolutely. There is no reason to do anything like that. Right. Yeah. So nobody was doxxed. We don't dox anybody. Claiming we... you were doxxed is not a doxing make. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and... And public records are public records, and that's all there is to it. So, again, um, if there's anybody out there who thinks we doxed anybody, you would have to think that coming from me, I would totally know better. Um, uh, You know, like I said, after going through what I went through with the Gamergate thing, uh, you know, there was always an advantage, right? And I mean this sarcastically about being a female uh, gaming journalist with Massively. I There was... A consistent, persistent. Terry mm-hmm. blown everybody at cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> well, according Ooh, to the gamer gators, I have. Yeah. Uh, according to gamer gators, I am the biggest slut because you know I was a female gaming writer. That's really what I was. And um, so you know what I've dealt. I've dealt with the negative side on that, and I can understand why people are so sensitive. Absolutely, and you have a right to be sensitive. But at the same time. Um, I am also very well aware of what are public records. I know what doxing really is, and I don't do that to people, and neither do anybody in this show. We have never doxed anybody. Mike hasn't doxed anybody. Nick hasn't doxed anybody. Alan hasn't doxed anybody. Janet hasn't doxed anybody, and neither has Nick. And Why was I mentioned others. twice? Because I we him. don't know about Steve, by the way. Oh, Steve, Steve. Oh, no. Steve's all over it. Steve <laughs> is just a doxing machine. <laughs> so that it, the, that is just bullshit. 
it's just bullshit. And um, ironic you say that with the meme I just put in. My dog docks <laughs> the, the the neighbor's dog next door. Oh, that's just foul. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's time to move on. I mean, uh, we've spent three (laughs) quarters of the show speaking about what we really needed to get out the door. And and we do appreciate everybody's patience in this regard. To be honest with you, I think our future coverage of the Axanar um, Bruhaha will be short and sweet. Uh, uh, We'll cover what's going on, and that's pretty much it. And uh, we'll see how discovery goes. We'll see what their answer is like at the end of the month when they respond to the court complaint. And um, well, that might be the whole show. It might. They're still True. talking about. <laughs> they're still talking about. They're hopeful for a settlement. I'm. I'm pretty convinced that uh, any settlement will include uh, this. The complete shutdown of the project. I'm just. I don't think CBS is going to say, "Yeah, I- you can go for it." Now, I do have a, a, a legal question because what – did CBS – have they been told that they have to stop working on it for now? Yes. There, yes. Uh, there is a temporary injunction, right, Janet? Uh, no, it, it's actually not an injunction. This is a part of the uh, exchange, I, I'm oh, assuming. Oh, for the Yeah, for the extension of time to answer, uh, according to the extension, it says that there can be no shooting or filming – of uh, of the uh, of the production, to my mind, what that you know it, it, in in the law we we're we're very precise about our language, and so you may think shooting and filming are the same thing, and they sound like they're the same thing, but I think that what they're getting at is that not only to um, disallow the. Um, the filming of the actual production, but I believe also that this would disallow things like a um, like a screen test. Uh, so, you know, but but I may be reading too much. Into yeah, it, but that's it, what I'm seeing from the, from the uh, we're not from sure. The document. We're not sure if that agreement included what most of us would consider to be pre-production activities. Right, but that's but that's where we are right now. So yeah. so there is there there can't be any more actual on screen production. That is that is the agreement. Uh, as for uh, office renovations, there's nothing against that. There is nothing against that. So if they're going on, that's not against that agreement. It doesn't mean that there might not be issues with it in the future. But it but office renovations are, in all fairness, they are not against that yeah. particular agreement. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that has nothing to do with actual filming. Precisely. Yeah, it, 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 and, and there, therein lies we don't know. We, we right. don't know what the intentions were, it, and it really doesn't make a difference at this point in time. All I know is that technically they're not supposed to be doing any filming or any shooting until the they get their – until the, the litigation kind of kicks in, at which time I'm sure the judge will lay some ground rules as to what can and can't be done while litigation starts. One of the requests that CBS and Paramount made in their complaint is that all all activities are are to be stopped until the litigation is completed. Um I, but it's still up to the judge as to whether or not what that injunction that injunction would be enforced. So I don't know. So th- again, we're still looking forward to hearing Axonar's response, um, whether or not that is again going back to what we talked about a few weeks ago. Their response could come in one of different, several different forms. It could be an actual answer to the complaint, which would be a bunch of general denials, um, most likely. Uh, I doubt that. You know, it's not it's not common for people to go out and admit a bunch of stuff when they answer <laughs> to a complaint. Um, two, it could be again a demur, um, which would attack the any technical uh, inconsistencies with the original complaint that filed by CBS and Paramount. It could also be a flat out motion to dismiss or a motion for summary judgment, um, depending on what those. Um, what law they believe they they can rely upon that would sway the judge to say there is no case here, um, and therefore I can summarily judge that there is no case and then dismiss it. It's kind of request for dismissal. Um, it depends on what their attorneys believe is the right way to answer on behalf of their clients, meaning Axonar. So we'll see what those answers are. Um, unless the case settles before then, it, there's there's still a lot of talk about this settlement. So I don't know if a date for mediation has been set or uh, even a voluntary settlement conference. Um, we don't know. 
we'll have to see how um, what we hear, and, and we'll keep you up to date, you guys. Um, but as far as the personal stuff is concerned, as you can imagine, Alec has pretty much unfriended all of us, um, so that's okay. That means no more... <laughs> No more off the cuff uh, conversations, and we're all, we're all pretty cool with that. And again, because I have a very distinct opinion about um, about this, I'm I'm no longer feeling like I have to hold that in, and I didn't. So that was what today's show was about: was to say uh, it, we're all pretty much on the same page that we're not fond of how things are going. I personally have already expressed my opinion. Uh, others are willing to do that. They are they are more than welcome to do that. But for right now, I think we should just move on to some fifty for fifty. Can I can I tell you why I love my friends? This yes. is an actual quote from from a private message that somebody sent me. They were talking about something, and this is an actual quote. You got to think there was some serious back pain when crucified. It's like the opposite of inversion therapy. Well, that's Thank why you, people Casey. die. Did, how are we getting into this? <laughs> because I just love my friends that, you know, the things that come out of their mouths well, and heads. And that's, and that's, and that's exactly, people don't die from bleeding to death in crucifixion. They suffocate. It's horrible. Yes, but we are talking about back pain. <laughs> Which, you know. <laughs> and it being the opposite of inversion therapy. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Because inversion therapy, you hang upside down and that old guy yells at you. And my sinuses would clear up. Really? Ooh. Do you know that if I ever, when I get a real massage, I don't know. My, Alan. my it's, head, it's like this all the time. My head is just like <laughs> cotton balls afterwards, <laughs> and I don't understand what that's about. <laughs> okay, we have fifty for fifty. What's your favorite episode? GNT shows fifty for fifty. Oh, we do? Yeah, 50 for 50. Yes, 50 for 50. Well, I have my little thing today. And That's Alan right. is here. So we, we actually have Alan. We had a blog post by Alan. Yes. And and yeah. we have a new we have a new one. I actually have a new one that I'm going to uh, oh. send you guys today. Um, as I promised, um, the bottom 10. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> As we know, we did that. We did a survey to determine what our have him get our, closer to the mic. Please. Okay. As as we oh, hold on a second, real quick. She's fixing the microphone for me. Professional professionals in David Mack and Myers. How does that sound? Better. Better. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Um, as we know, we did uh, we did the survey to try to determine uh, you know the listeners' favorite fifty episodes for the fiftieth anniversary. But as a side part of that, obviously we ranked everything and. Um, yeah, we saw what also floated to. We saw what floated to the top. We saw what uh, sank to the bottom, and so I have the list of the bottom ten episodes. And it, uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, yeah, why don't I just count those down for you real quick? Uh, we'll and start. Now, we'll start with the countdown. Yeah, with the countdown. Here we go. Uh, number ten, worst episode. DS Nine, season six, episode twenty three, Profit and Lace. Can't disagree. <laughs> I mean, this is like <laughs> this is like they were trying to like what do like uh, some like it hot or something, you know? Yeah. But with the fer- with the Ferengi and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, first off, Armin is great in it because he's a great actor. He'll do he'll make any material work. But and this was funny as hell. I'm sorry, I laugh my ass off. <laughs> I I think it's kind of creepy actually because <laughs> yeah. he is, actually goes yeah. through like a sex change. Procedure with Bashir. Yeah, Quark with breasts we just don't need. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. It, it, it's a pre- I think it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, number nine, TNG, season seven, episode 14, Sub Rosa. Oh. Yeah, I didn't like that. My one. nuts are hurting. <laughs> oh, my God. I, first off, to me, it's, one of, it's probably one of the most boring episodes ever. I mean, Crushers get seduced by this uh, alien ghost thing, and it's all... And it's the same alien ghost that seduced her grandmother? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and then they try to get all, you know, like, smoky, misty, gothic-y and, and everything. And, um, well, um, 
I, you know, there is the one author... redeeming. There is one redeeming scene though, and that's when she's being possessed by the uh, by the alien. She has this. She has a scene very reminiscent to like Meg Ryan from uh, When Harry Met <laughs> Sally, where she has like this. <laughs> I'll have what she's having. <laughs> I'll have what she's having. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the one scene that's worth watching. Actually, <laughs> yeah. you know, me. Anne Rice was like credited on that because of. Interview for a vampire and that whole thing, and then she was like, "No, this sucks. Take my name off of this." <laughs> she wanted to remove herself from it. Uh, you know, it's funny when I was reading, I was reading on Memory Alpha about it, and even uh, Berman and Michael Piller, uh, when they were talking about it, were like, uh, "You know, this 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 had the possibility for for embarrassment." <laughs> and <laughs> I think they were right. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, number eight, original series, season three, episode five. And the children shall lead. Oh, doesn't that have Shatner's daughter in it? Uh, you know, I think it does. No, that was Mary. Mary had the... Oh, you're right. And the children right. oh, shall sorry, lead sorry. is the one with Marvin Belli as the ghost. Yeah, Mel- okay, okay. Marvin Belli? First off... You Mel- mean the attorney? Mel- yes. Marvin Belli. <laughs> I mean, this was stunt casting. I mean, you think about it. This was, what, 1968 or so? Uh, 69 oh, for, this, yeah. for this period? Okay, so what was Mel- Melvin Belli? I mean, he, he was the defense attorney for Jack Ruby. <laughs> Outside of that, why? Why is he in this episode? <sighs> Sad card? I, I, it, yes. Yeah. Stop uh, casting. Oh my god, they taffed Hartley them in. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Oh, they probably, yeah, that's that's but, a scary thing. But again, why? Why? You know, you know, in exchange they, they for legal favors. And the casting director sitting there going, <laughs> you know who would be perfect for this? Melvin <laughs> Belli! <laughs> yeah. It was in exchange for legal favors. You know what? The next time we Probably talk to right, the dreamy Mark Cushman, we got to talk to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yes. All right. Number seven, <clears throat> DS9, season one, episode 10, Move Along Home. Shit, get, this is bullshit. <laughs> I cry bullshit. Why? Why? I love that episode. <laughs> Playing hopscotch in... in, in, in... Adult, uh, oh, a gamma quadrant. Alan Marie. Oh, God. <laughs> Playing you know, hot scotch the, the, in a gamma quadrant version of a holodeck. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know and, what? You know what, people? Yeah. Y'all are fucked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was the pollster. These were the people taking the poll. This not was from us. the poll. Well, I don't know. I, I, I kind of. You have no one to blame but yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, you have nobody to blame but yourself. But yourself. Right. All right. Since Nick liked that one, we'll move on. Uh, I do. Th- I and I know <laughs> that it's hated, but it makes me. I it makes me laugh. Well, that's See, what I profit like. Lace profit does and for lace. Me. I like I'm the pro- same thing. profit and lace as well. So it's like you know, no one to blame but our listeners. It's all that's your right. faults. That's, that's right. right. That's all right. <laughs> Alamo <laughs> rain, count to four. Alamo rain, then it's three no more. Alamo rain, if you can see. Alamo rain, you'll come with me. Alamo rain, third shop. Uh huh. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Number six, DS9. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, DS9, season five, episode seven. That he who is without sin. You remember this one? No. They, okay, here's how I sum it up. Moby, Worf, and Jadzia take a vacation on Ryza. Oh, Worf, yeah. Worf, 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 yeah. Jadzia acts put out, and there's like some kind of revolution going on, and the terrorists, their big weapon is they made it rain. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I think, I think the only thing about this episode, isn't this the one where everybody finds out that trill spots go all the way down? Uh, yeah. That's the only redeeming quality. I would say episode. that is the only redeeming quality of this one. But isn't this the one with Veronica uh, or uh, yeah. Vanessa Williams? Vanessa Williams. Yes, yes. Okay. You know, I think this was supposed to be like a lighthearted little romp around Riza and everything. It just looks like nobody's having any fun. <laughs> Why yeah, are the true. Ferengi wearing bathing suits from 1912? <laughs> Because <laughs> you don't want to know if the if it does go all the way down. <laughs> you know, it's like they're in the Ooh, they have lobes in places them to you don't like, want to know. Hey, come over here, Toots Twenty Three Skidoo. <laughs> Doing the Charleston, you know all of that. So here we go, the bottom five. Uh, number five, original series, season three, episode six, Spock's brain. 
Understood. Spot. It's a lot Spot. higher than I. I mean, a lot yeah, lower than I thought, I thought it, would it would be. be. I thought it would be. Uh, I thought it would be lower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I found a wow. Leonard Nimoy quote on this episode. It's frankly during the entire shooting of the episode, I was embarrassed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, remarkably, this was the this was the one episode that received the highest number of what were they thinking votes in our survey. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, again, Mark Cushman, he doesn't defend that episode, but he does explain what they were thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, because they that they were the first heart the transplant hell? had happened. Uh, yeah. Like. The, uh, right around the time that they were writing the script for it. Right, right. Now, all I can say about this one is brain? What is brain? <laughs> uh, number four, PNG, season one, episode three, Code of Honor. Code of Honor. I'm actually surprised this one was as high as it was. <laughs> this needed to be lower on the list. And it <laughs> There's was only the, like three more. And it was the fourth worst. <laughs> Wow, I'm like starting to wonder what's going to be in the top spot or oh, the low spot. Oh, I, I got an idea. Got an okay, idea. well, let's just keep moving along because yes. there's really nothing to say about Code of Honor. Uh, number three, it's Enterprise, season four, episode 22. These are the voyages. Ah, which yeah, I'm I was sure made expecting that Je- to be number one. I was going to say, which made Janet very happy that at least it was in the bottom five. <laughs> yeah, the bottom three. Yeah, hell well, yeah. I, you know, we've talked this one to death. But, I mean, let's face it; it's basically a TNG episode, and it's mm-hmm. Riker, and not a good one. Riker trying to use the holodeck to look at the historical records, like it's some kind of a Galaxy Quest thing, to figure out if he should make a decision about something. It's like seriously, that's how you're going to decide if you're going to you know, like, come clean about your your deception with the Pegasus incident. I mean, seriously? And then, and then, and and, and really what it is, is Enterprise had just hit its stride and then it got, it got canceled. Right. And it's like, okay, we're going to tie up this series. So, okay, let's write something real quick. And this is what it, I mean, that's what they came up with. I mean, it's just, uh, I think it left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Definitely. And, and, and a lot of the actors are distanced themselves from it. And that tells you something. Exactly. Exactly. All right. We got two left. Wait a minute. Sun say all. You're like, Riker? Doing research? What the fuck? <laughs> I have to say, he does research a lot. And there's actually a big sequence in um, uh, uh, Insurrection where he and Marina do a lot of research on the Sona. So don't say he doesn't know how to read a book. I'm just telling you. Yeah, but the whole time he was on the make for it, too. Well, yeah, they both were. <laughs> It was like going to the kids' library. It's like, let's go to the library. Yeah. It was very cute. So we can go make out in the back. Yeah. Um, All right. Here they are, the top, the bottom two. Number two, Voyager, season two, episode 15. What do you think it is? Threshold. 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 It's the only thing it can be. I'm (laughs) shocked. I am absolutely shocked. (laughs) What? I I wrote a sequel to Threshold. I love Threshold. (laughs) Hopefully, in your in your sequel, you address the fact that they left these three salamander human hybrid things on a planet. I mean, like, let's talk about breaking the prime directive. <laughs> I, I I actually An said that there species. were a lot more. <laughs> that there were a lot more. So <laughs> hey, you know they just that they just took over the planet. But hey, you know, th- th- pl- please feel free. Yeah, to that's what in, that's what invasive species do. Um, but I, I'm shocked that it's so that it's so high. I mean, you thought it would be number one. I thought it would be. Uh, I, I I have no idea anymore what's going to be number one. Well, here it comes, uh, number one, um, TNG season two. Episode 22, Shades of Grey. <laughs> I was shocked. I thought Shades of Grey would have been much higher and something else would have been much lower. Well, you know, it's funny. When I, yeah. when I did a little research on this, there is not a single person associated with this episode that is happy about it. Yeah. Wow. Nobody, nobody. I mean, what had happened was they had actually blown their budget for the season. They had to get another one in the can. And... Um, they did a retrospective. Uh, and so they, they did, did a, a clip, clip, show. clip show. They did a clip show. Uh, they filmed it. I, I read they filmed it in three days. 
And because all they had to do was do the um, the uh, shoulder scenes in the... In, and they only had to pay three actors. And they only had to pay basically three actors and uh, and then do a clip show. My, my thought on it was it might have been better if they'd done it later in the series uh, so they would have more footage of Riker because even the clips they repeat over and over and over again. Yeah. It's just, it's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> So there it is. There's your bottom 10. And the chat room is right up with it. But today, we're going to talk about where we are kind of in the middle of our countdown of the top 50 for 50. And today, we're going to talk about, um, let me make sure I've got this right. Yep. Number 34, DS9, Season 4, Episode 11, Paradise Lost. Do we have Nick back yet? Not yet. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a, oh. He, poor Nick got a call from work. Oh. And so he had to take this call. So he's in the midst. So Mikey, it's just you and me for a bit. No problem. <laughs> so why don't you start off, my dear? Paradise Lost. Well, um, it was not, it was, it was one of the few times in Trek where we actually get to see Earth for any extended period of time. And in the present day. I mean, not, not tra- time travel. Not and, time travel or anything like that, yeah. right? And so we get to see what Earth is like uh, in, in, in in this time period of DS9. Um, the Dominion threat is starting to ramp up. There's a sense of paranoia among Starfleet. Um, Odo and uh, Cisco they go back to Earth uh, to help Starfleet uh, with their security protocols, right? Instituting blood screenings and everything else. And there's a, there's a, Cisco spends a lot of time with his father, and the 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 relationship between the two. You can see the stress that Cisco is is going through and how he's kind of he's he's just so on edge. And he at one point he even thinks that his father may be a, a changeling for for wanting to um to not have not be blood screened and he offers a a, a, a suggestion or an idea and it, it's one that that cisco didn't consider you could tell was the the idea that if he was a really smart changeling all you have to do is kill some poor sap drain every single ounce of blood from him and then just squeeze it out on demand yeah this this episode was one of the <clears throat> it was one of the the times I actually started to really adore DS9 because it started to really address some of the very real political um political questions of our time mm-hmm. in the present where what <clears throat> where we have as a you know kind of the that geopolitical questions that we have about how do you know somebody is 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 real how do you know you know that terrorist question that well, we've been dealing with since i think it's very interesting that it, it, you know you it, of course this episode occurred in the 90s right so it was pre 911 right but think about the ramifications of how it comments about how we feel about you know the the balance of personal liberty versus uh, national security, um, you know how um, um, quick we are to give up our rights um, because of a fear of uh, of some kind of uh, incursion, and it's interesting because it's, uh, to me it's very prophetic in a yes. lot of ways, and it's interesting how. That paranoia will change people politically and what their their uh, thought processes are. So you have these these people that are Starfleet that become so paranoid, and then actually becomes almost like a power grab coup in a lot of ways. And and it just goes to show that how that paranoia can uh, actually feed and 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 work to destroy a society. I think this episode works very very well in conjunction with TNG's The Drumhead. Where mm-hmm. you you see where that paranoia and the idea of of security outweighing personal liberty and personal um, rights um, in order for that quote unquote that greater good and how these things can be twisted um, into giving up your rights mm-hmm. and and how this kind of goes and again from the late nineties and into the early. 2000s and after 9-11 where we see what happens with the storylines that we see in Enterprise um, and that's what I would and that again that's what I would have liked to have seen more out of Enterprise is mm-hmm. how did 
it, how it, how 9/11 affected the U.S. I would have liked to have seen how did uh, the Zindi weapon affect Earth more. Mm -hmm. And um, I, this the the Dominion War and the idea of having an unseen, unknown um, enemy amongst us is how do we deal with that without giving up what makes us us? Mm -hmm. And that's why I love this episode so very much. <clears throat> to be honest with you, I'm surprised it didn't rank a little yeah. bit higher. You know, it, it also, it's interesting because it could, it's almost a commentary too about the fifties communist uh, uh, scare too. You know, right. It's that same thing of fostering that us against them, the, the enemy within they're walking among us. Uh, you know, we got to do these things to protect ourselves. And at this, and, and basically that is what really ruins the society. And isn't it's that one of, it's one of those episodes where, where it, 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 it's almost, it's message is almost timeless, you know, because yes. it's something that, that we constantly have to be vigilant and, 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 uh, always have to be, uh, aware of. The, the possibility that this type, type type of thing can happen or or whatnot it's requiring us to be vigilant not just you know in terms of security but in terms of maintaining our freedom and how do you maintain that balance of personal freedom and social and and society security Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it is a fine line and, and a lot of times that line is crossed and you end up having to go back and then instead of it being a consistent, it's a pendulum and that's twice as scary. So, so yeah, great episode. Um, if you get Nick and Janet are back, I think, are they? Yeah, they should be. Yes. Yes. If you guys want to pipe in. Uh, just the, yeah, similar kind of idea to, um, uh, to, to the, uh, to the Red Scare, where, uh, we don't know who's, who's who, and, uh, and, and how important, you know, how, how frightening that really can be. I, I think that's the, I think that's the lesson, and I think that that's sort of the thing about shapeshifters in general, is, uh, you don't know, you have nothing to, to, to pin your, your their identity on, you know, nothing to, to really know about them. That, that's kind of what I took from it. Cool. Nick, do you have anything to say? Or he went back out again. Yeah, uh, he I'm might still be on the call. Okay, well then let's move on. Uh, the, the, moving up in our list, I should say, is uh, number 33. Um, uh, is TNG, uh, Season 3, Episode 23, Sarek. And what's nice about this episode is we've already spoken about um, the... Oh, uh, um, the episodes where we see Sarek before, you know, uh, at the end of his life, and so this is kind of, this uh, this is a prequel uh, of sorts. This happened before, uh, so in this Sarek, it, it's revealed that Sarek has um, the. Vulcan I don't remember the Alzheimer's. name of the disease. Yeah, yeah. Vulcan's Al Alzheimer's. <laughs> Bendai Bendai syndrome. Bendai oh, the Bendai syndrome. syndrome now. Yes, thank you. So we get to see, you know, how how this thing has manifested itself in Vulcans, at least in the early stages, and how people are trying to help him cope, just so he can 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 get one more thing done and, and go out with, you know, an. Uh, on a high note, so to speak. Um, it's also as much about this, the, uh, the, uh, um, stigma that people who have these degenerative diseases mm -hmm. internalize and feel, you know, Sarek is, is highly embarrassed that this is happening. And, and, um, you know, it, it, it's such a stigma in their culture. And so it is, it's a, it's a great commentary about how that works in our culture as well. You know, when, when people who are brilliant and, and, and incredible, and then suddenly they have this degenerative disease, it's not their fault, but, but, but they diminish in such ways. Um, the emotion and, and, the, and the feel about that is just, it's, it's staggering. Did you notice that, I'm sorry to, to yeah. I know Terry wanted to say something, but no, 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 no. did you notice that in the beginning, um, they, they said that, uh, that the <coughs> disease didn't exist or that they were, um, that there were, weren't any recent reports of it. And then at the end of the episode, there's a comment how the, the research is still ongoing. So amongst the, the society itself, it's like they're all in denial. That yeah. They don't want to admit that this is a real thing, and uh, at least to publicly. 
but it is something that they're all kind of concerned about, but they're not willing to talk about. And what's so funny is that I think it was a real, um, a real good uh, mirror of how we were at least in America at the time when it came to Alzheimer's is Alzheimer's was always something that people kind of, um, you know, we didn't really talk about it because we called it something else. And, um, there was a, a large influx of people who were beginning to suffer, but we just called it senility. Remember? Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. Oh, they're, oh, they're senile. Sure. Yep. And, yep. And, 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 and it goes back to that old thing where we talk about, you know, we as a society are really, really good at whispering shit. Right. It's that um, that what uh, Neil Simon play. Right. Uh, Biloxi Blues, is it? Mm-hmm. That, or uh, where Brighton Beach, I think oh, it was Brighton Beach Memoirs, where there's a sequence where the narrator talks about, you know, when you talk about something evil, you always whisper it. And it's like, oh, you know, Mabel, she's got cancer. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. she's got she's got. Parkinson's disease. You know, it's that you whisper the disease Mm -hmm. and it goes back to our culture in that you'd never wanted to raise the evil spirit. You whisper it so the evil spirit won't hear you. You don't want to bring the evil upon you. We don't whisper because we're not trying to keep another person from being embarrassed. We're whispering it because we don't want to bring that evil upon ourselves. That's why we do it. We do it to protect our own as opposed to you don't want to bring that evil upon yourself. It's a very old tradition that people don't realize they do. And um, this this episode brings that out in such fashion that the only way to combat that, quote unquote, the evil is to educate, talk about be aware of and that it's okay, that it's okay to talk about Alzheimer's. It's okay to talk about, uh, these diseases and, and, or conditions or anything else that affects mental illness is, is especially sensitive. And Alzheimer's is one of those that crosses both of those, right? It, it crosses, um, it crosses just not just a, a, a disease that nobody wants, but it's also a mental illness a, a disease that people don't really want to talk about because they don't understand it. And it's a lot easier to ignore and whisper it than it is to get yourself educated and realize that some of these things can be treated and that people aren't bad because they have them. And we have to be okay on ourselves if we are stricken with one of these diseases to say, no, it's okay to, to, to deal with it. And I can, this is also one of the most heartbreaking episodes because you love Sarek. Everybody allow around him loves him, even Spock, despite their, Mm -hmm. their differences loves this character and to see him going through something is so painful, but it is by and large the most amazing how Patrick Stewart didn't win an Emmy for this. I'll never understand. <laughs> There's two tour de force acting. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yes. In this. There's Patrick Stewart uh, in the, when he's holding uh, Sarek's, when, when they've had the mind meld and, and everything, and he's taking on all the emotion. Uh, but, you know, uh, Mark Leonard, too, who we've seen in Star Trek for Fantastic. Know, years. And he's always he's always been that, that uh, you know, generally he's always been the, the, the Vulcan character. And that character has been so stoic and so respectful. Um, and then to see that character lose his, um, his and, control... Uh, he did an incredible job. I mean, it was just Mark Leonard was was brilliant in it. So yeah, Mikey. Yes. How do you, did I? And um, bleh. This I, the this it's just one of those episodes that it does it just it wrecks me emotionally. It just wrecks me. Um, it's funny is that I don't watch it a lot because it wrecks me. Um, but I, I remember almost every word. I remember the facial expressions. I remember the pain. It is an exceptionally written uh, story and script. It's an exceptionally acted uh, story and script. And if this is the baseline from which we're moving up, all I can say is, oh, holy crap, the next 32 are going to be fucking amazing. <laughs> it's going to be a, a hell of a ride. Well, do you want the list for the next two? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, for next week, uh, number 32, it is a DS9 episode, season three, episode 20, Improbable Cause. And then 
I, yeah, I don't remember that one. I'm going to have to look that one up a little bit. I'm sure it's, I mean, once I see it, I'll probably remember. Uh, but now, number 31. This is our first original series in our 50 list. <gasps> wow. F- right wow around. is right. That's yeah. right. Wow. So yeah. uh, it's number 31. Uh, it's season two, episode 13, The Trouble with Triples. <laughs> really? Yay. This yeah. low for that episode? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I honestly thought it would be a little bit higher. Early on in the voting, it was much higher. Uh, but I think as more series uh, got into this, you know, more people did surveys of the later series, then things kind of moved around a little bit. Yeah. But um, again, we're talking about such a fine line because when you look at the number of votes and how the uh, percentages came out, I mean, we're talking like thousands of a percentage difference on, on right. some of these things now. So. Wow. I mean, it, 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 I guess percentage-wise, you would have to say that pretty much everything from here on out is almost a statistical tie. Um, it's it's close. it's very close. So that's why that uh, if you want to read Alan's blog post uh, on the fan dance on our site, go ahead and read that because it kind of outlines how he um, dealt with the poll numbers, why some. Um, uh, why ha- some had more representation? Voyager yeah. just didn't have a lot of representation on it at all. But um, as as far as the in- incoming poll numbers compared to everything else, but here's it, like t- I said, it's your own fault. Here's how tight it could be. When the scores were tied, I had to have a tiebreaker, so I used the number of or the percentage of votes in the highest categories, and then use those as the, the, the breaks all the way from there. Sometimes one vote could throw an episode down five or six uh, spots. It was amazing how close it was. Wow. Uh, they're posting pictures of improbable cause in the uh, chat room, and now I remember this is the episode where Odo has, doesn't he have the disease that the Federation oh, created? Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, my oh. God. That's no, when no, I started. no, that's the one where Garrick is... Um... Torturing him? What? It, it is questioning him and won't let him regenerate. Oh, oh okay. yeah. No, this was great. This Hi, is back this next. is the first strike against the Dominion. Where the yes. Tal the card- yeah. and the Obsidian Order strike at the Founder's Planet. Okay. And and uh, this is before. This is almost like the first strike uh, of the Alpha Quadrant against the the the, the Dominion, and it's. Um, what what's ironic is is the two factions that end up striking against the Dominion kind of sort of join them at some point. Hmm. So it's kind of there's a little bit of irony in the grand scheme of things yeah. about this episode. Well, cool. So we'll talk more about improbable cause next week, along right with Trouble. Trouble with Tribbles. Oh, that's two totally different mindsets. I was say, talk about uh, <laughs> a little bit of a <laughs> holy crap polar opposite. Oh my god. <laughs> Something to say. Announcements. Mike, do we have any announcements? I know we didn't get a lot, uh, get to a lot of news. There's some great news which we can touch on next week. Uh, there's an article about uh, a bunch of new CBS products licensees were announced this week that we will touch on next week. Build a bear and um, uh, a, a bunch Defiant of other drones. News. Defiant drones. We hope. It just says RC vehicles. It yeah. says remote control vehicles. But, oh, my and God. And drones. The, two separate things. Did it say things, drones? But it did say that there is a drone company involved. Oh, my God. So I'm hoping for a defiant drone. Oh, defiant my drone, God. Drone. But, yeah. Anyways, more about that later. Um, so uh, we have uh, fixed the Facebook commenting um, thing on our posts. So if you want to feel free, if you want to... F- Leave us a comment on our website on any of the of, of our show show notes. Feel free to do so. We and now will, we'll know about them. We'll know about it. So, <laughs> um, so thank you to uh, Mr. Robert Burnett for pointing out the error um, and uh, allowing us the opportunity to fix uh, a problem. So thank you. And I think that's kind of it. Um, yeah. Again, if you want to. Um, by the way, we do welcome all replies. Um, if you have a question for us, if you have a statement for us, if you have anything, there is a way for you to get in touch with us. You can follow us on Twitter uh, at Sunday GNT. You can leave us a voicemail. If you go to our uh, website, which is gntshow.com, you can 
click over there. It's on the little right-hand side. It says, leave us a voicemail. You can leave us a voicemail, but please understand if you leave us a voicemail, we may use it on the show. So, um, take that for what it's worth. Um, you can send us an, like I said, an email, a, a voicemail. You can leave a comment on one of our sites. Now we'll, we'll, we'll know that it comes through. Um, and you can always just, <clears throat> You know, there's always a way, and you can hit the contact us button, by the way. That's really easy. It's really easy. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can follow me personally on Twitter. Uh, I don't always talk about GNT show. I don't always talk about Trek, but sometimes I, you know, sometimes, sometimes I do at Terry Lynn S that's T E R I L Y N N S as in Sam, everybody else, where can they follow you? Um, well, I've got, uh, I, I go have ahead. two. Uh, I'm sorry. You want to go ahead? Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Please. Uh, well, I have two, but the probably I've I've been touting the other one, so I'll tout this one. Um, where I actually talk more like me as a as myself, as opposed to a fan. I uh, it's called Shrinking Jess. Uh, that's uh, leave off the last S for savings. Um, that one is uh, I I put my schoolwork on that, and I'm getting my master's in social media, so you can see stuff about social media if you're interested. Thank you. Cool. Um, I'm S. I'm Ceridium Sto. That's S O R I E D E M S T O on Twitter. Um, Facebook is similar, but it's misspelled. Uh, the I and the E are switched. Um, I can't get that fixed either. Facebook is being a pain. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 on I'm on Facebook too. So it's just a little harder to find me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and Nick? Uh, at Gettysburg7 on Twitter. And that's the number seven. Yep. Yeah, my see. Nick is um, a little preoccupied right now, and, and that's okay. It's it's those. And uh, that's kind of it, you guys. Uh, Straight again, at Gallifrey, episode three is available if you're interested in Doctor Who. But not okay. episode four. Not yeah. episode four. Episode four. He left it on the Dalek planet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it was exterminated? It was exterminated. Exterminate. Exterminate. <laughs> okay. And we'd like to thank Alan for joining us this week to talk about the bottom 10 of hey. our 50 for 50. That thank was fun. Thank you, sir. Yay, thank you. Yeah, and thank you. And, uh, if uh, we can't wait to have you back on, and you have it written up, right? I did write up a blog post on the bottom 10. So I... he'll, he'll have it as a fan dance for us soon. Very cool. Awesome. Okay, you guys, that's it for episode 223. We look forward to getting back to kind of our old ways in episode 224. Um, but until then, uh, live long and prosper. Kapla. See you later. Enjoy your weekend, folks. Joe Lantro, bitches. Music for the GNT show is provided by Five Year Mission, Enterprise Blues Band, Warp 11. Andrew Allen and Rathbor. The GNT show is a BLB production. Move ahead, walk back to ten. Put a mini skirt on my yo man. Represent the human race.
take a tour with me. There'll be no cons or Kobayashi. I'm gonna travel. Zero G.